All right, um, so I'm going to tell you the story of Theseus and the Minotaur, um, kind of a famous one. This story is actually um, what gave the writers the idea for the Hunger Games. Um, so I'm sure you've seen the Hunger Games. If you haven't, it's kind of based on this, but not really. It's more just inspired the Hunger Games. Um, come on, move. Okay, so to start it all off, um, a guy named King Aegis, or Aegeus, uh, is the king of Athens. I'm sure you've heard of Athens. Um, one day he goes to the oracle to find out if he will ever have a son. The oracle, in some weird, crazy language, says pretty much, do not have sex until you get home to Athens, because your firstborn son will be a mighty hero. But, as guys sometimes do, he stops at a city of Trojan, where he gets too drunk, and wakes up beside a beautiful naked woman. What do you think happened? Well, he realizes that he might have got that woman pregnant. So he says to her, listen, if I do have a son, if he is really this hero that he's supposed to be, um, he will be able to lift this giant boulder, and under this giant boulder is um, a pair of sandals and a sword. If, if he can lift this boulder, get the sandals and the sword, tell him to come to Athens, and he will rule as the king of Athens once I'm gone. The controversy, the Jerry Springer type controversy, is apparently the same woman next day was raped by the god Poseidon. So, like, we don't have paternity testing back then, but who is the father? Um, if you had to choose to say your son is the, the son of the king of Athens or the god Poseidon, you would probably choose to say your son is the son of Poseidon. And that's exactly how Theseus is raised believing he is the son of Poseidon, and therefore he is a demigod, a half-god. Um, so as he gets to adulthood, his mom admits, like, listen, I kind of slept around a bit. Um, I don't know who your dad is. So one of your potential fathers left some stuff for you under this boulder. If you can lift it, then you must be pretty awesome. So he goes to the boulder, lifts the boulder easily, takes the sandals uh, and the sword. Um, so he says, well, I'm going to go journey to Athens then and maybe meet my father. Um, so the journey from Argos to Athens, if you even look on your map, is very easy by sea. Just get on a boat, you can be there very quickly. But Theseus chooses to walk there, even though that the road there has tons and tons of criminals and bandits on it. Why would he do that? Well, because as we talked about, uh, a Greek hero is one who has a very good resume, a big name. He wants people to know what he's accomplished. So yeah, he could take the easy way to Athens, but why not walk there and beat all the criminals on the way and increase the, you know, how awesome your name is. When people say Theseus, that means something. Um, so the first place, first criminal he runs into is a guy named Sinus. And what Sinus does is he would take travelers, pull two trees together, tie their arms, uh, tie one arm to one tree, another arm to another tree, and then let the trees go. When they let the trees go, the person is pulled completely apart. Um, so, same thing happens, Theseus goes there, gets tied up, but right in the last second he switches it around and ties Sinus to a tree, lets the two trees go, and Sinus is pulled apart. Um, next criminal thing he kind of runs into is the Chromionian, which is pretty much a wild, crazy boar that's just been eating people on their way to Athens. Um, the crazy wild boar attacks him, and Theseus, using his demigod, superhuman strength, just completely just crushes this wild boar. Um, next stop is a guy named Skyron. And what Skyron would do is kidnap travelers and take them up on top of a cliff. And as punishment, he would make them for some reason wash his feet. So he would kidnap people, then make them wash his feet. And as they were washing his feet, he would kick them off the edge of the cliff uh, to their death. So Theseus gets kidnapped, so just lets himself be kidnapped. Um, and Skyron says, okay, wash my feet. Theseus grabs his foot, grabs his ankle, and tosses him off the cliff instead. So that's now three criminals clear. Um, Procrustes is another interesting guy. He invites people into his house, says, oh yes, you may stay here, you may have my bed. The catch being, you have to fit the bed, literally. If you're too big for the bed, he'll cut off your legs and arms to make you fit. If you're too small, he will stretch you across the bed with ropes and chains and stretch your body until you cover the whole bed. So same thing, Theseus goes, oh sure, that's okay. Lies down, just as Procrustes is about to cut him down to size, Theseus grabs him, turns the tables, attaches Procrustes to his bed, and then 
cuts Procrustes to fit his bed. So it does the exact same thing to him. Finally, uh, Theseus gets to Athens, and everybody, because his skin's a little darker, um, laughs at him because he's from Argos and they look different. Okay, this really pisses Theseus off, so he gets Hulk rage mad, grabs two giant oxen, like so two giant bulls, just picks them up in one hand and throws them on top of a roof. So two giant bulls just throws them on a roof. Um, so the, now the Athenians are like, okay, maybe we shouldn't mess with this guy, he's obviously got some sort of superhuman strength. Um, so, obviously now, people are kind of knowing who Theseus is, the stories of everything he's accomplished is spreading pretty quickly. Um, so the wife of the King Aegeus, uh, Medea, who's actually in another story that some of you might be doing called the Argonautica, um, she realized that Theseus might be a threat to the kingdom of Athens, and she really wants her son to be the king of Athens. Um, so she tries to poison him. But just before he drinks the poison, uh, King Aegeus notices the sandals and the sword that Theseus has, realizes that Theseus is his son, and smacks the glass of poison out of his hand, and embraces him as his son. Uh, Medea, still not very happy, and says, well, if Theseus is so great, why doesn't he go slay the dangerous bull that has been ravaging the land? Thinking the bull will obviously kill Theseus. Obviously the bull does not kill Theseus. Theseus kills the bull. Um, another problem is that Aegeus' brother Pallas has 50 sons. That's 50 sons who could potentially be the king of Athens one day. With Theseus there, that's not going to happen, so they're pissed. So what happens is all 50 of those people attack just a little Theseus by himself, but Theseus kills all 50 of those kids. And they're not kids, but all 50 of Pallas' sons who would be potentially the kings of Athens. So now Theseus has secured the throne of Athens for himself, once his father dies. Um, so then the Aegeus kind of says, hey, Theseus, there's probably something you should know. Uh, every nine years, the king of Athens has to send seven men and seven women to uh, the island of Crete uh, to feed the Minotaur. Um, why do they have to do this? Well, because a while ago, uh, Minos, the Minoans, they attacked the Athenians, and the Athenians surrendered, and one of the terms of their surrender was, okay, okay, please, like, We'll surrender to you. And then the guy's like, okay, well, we won't kill you, but you're going to have to send us seven men and seven women every nine years to feed our minotaur. And that was the a deal they made. Athens can survive in exchange for 14 sacrifices every nine years. Okay, so why are they feeding this minotaur? Where did this minotaur come from? Well, back in the day, there was once a famous bull. And this famous bull was supposed to be sacrificed to the gods, but the bull was so magnificent that the king refused to sacrifice it. Obviously, this pisses the gods off. So in revenge, Poseidon made the king's wife um, fall madly in love with the bull. Um, so the wife is like, well, I have a husband who I love, but I'm also so attracted to this bull. Um, so eventually, kind of the, her sexual frustration of not being able to be with this bull gets the best of her. Now this part gets a little weird. So she gets somebody to build a model bull that will fit her inside. So she dresses up like a bull um, and goes into the pasture. So the actual famous bull obviously sees this female bull thinking it's actually a bull and has sex with the king's wife inside of a model bull. Okay, so now this is probably sounding kind of messed up, but that's what happened. Um, she gets pregnant. And her son, or whatever it is, her child is a minotaur. Uh, half bull, half man. Okay, obviously the king is now a little embarrassed that his wife had sex with a bull. Um, so he has a famous person named Daedalus, um, is from the story of Daedalus and Icarus. They flew out of the tower, Icarus flew too close to the sun and fell to his death, Daedalus made it. Um, has him build a labyrinth, or a, a really complicated maze to keep the minotaur inside. Um, so it comes time for the seven men and seven women to be fed to the Minotaur. Theseus, who is the prince of Athens, future king of Athens, volunteers himself to do it. Uh, king of Jesus is like, no, please, son, no, don't do it, please don't go. But Theseus, who's already kind of fairly arrogant because he's defeated all these other criminals on the way, says, no, 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 I can do it. And he does. So the father agrees and says, fine. Um, when you come back, if you were successful, 
raise a white sail on your ship, and that white sail will mean that you're alive. If the Minotaur killed you, raise the black sail, and that means that Theseus is, you, that you died, that Theseus is no longer alive. Okay, so Theseus says, okay, okay, like I'll promise that if I die, they'll raise a black sail, and if I kill the Minotaur, I'll raise a white sail. So they get to, um, to Crete um, and to King Minos. They have some athletic games. Of course, Theseus wins them. Uh, more importantly, the king's daughter, uh, Ariadne, falls in love with Theseus. Um, Ariadne asks Daedalus, who made the maze, if there's a way out of the maze. But even Daedalus does not know how to get out of this maze because it's so complicated. But what Daedalus tells her um, is kind of a good trick. Um, Daedalus says, take a ball of thread. You tie the ball of thread to the start of the maze. Then if you can kill the minotaur, you can follow the thread, not the threat, the thread, all the way back. So you tie a piece of string to the start of the maze, tie the other piece of string to yourself, go there, kill the minotaur, and then just follow the string all the way back. Okay, pretty smart. Um, so Theseus meets the minotaur and obviously, as you would expect, is able to kill the minotaur. Um, some people say he did it with his bare hands, but in all the drawings and the models that we have, he rammed a sword down his throat and cut off his head. Theseus then follows the string back, um, gets back to Ariadne, and they celebrate. And now Theseus is like, oh my god, my dad is going to be so happy that I killed this minotaur. So he, he's in such a hurry to get back to his father that he forgets to raise the white sail. He leaves the sail black. He forgets. His dad is watching the boat return from Athens and sees the ship returning with a black sail. He assumes that Theseus has been killed, jumps to his death, and kills himself. Um, so Theseus is obviously very upset, but he goes on to reform Athens and makes it kind of, he's a, a super famous hero of Athens and he's a hero amongst his people. But as we know with Greek heroes, they want to make their name last forever. They want so many accomplishments. So he leaves and goes on all these heroic journeys, and in the, while he's gone, the people of Athens get attacked by the Spartans. Um, the Spartans attack and ravage the city, and they even take Theseus' mother as a slave. When Theseus does return, the people are pissed. They're like, you left just to go be, do these heroic adventures to make your name um, be so awesome, and you just left us here to suffer. So they say, you're a terrible king, get out of our city. Um, so he gets kicked out, uh, he goes to the island of Skyrus, um, and there's a guy named King Lycomedes who's also semi-famous, um, welcomes him. They go on a walk and Theseus again, since he's a little bit arrogant, um, starts bragging about his heroic deeds. Um, Lycomedes gets kind of annoyed and also jealous, so as they're walking past this cliff, Lycomedes pushes Theseus off the cliff and he falls to his death and dies. And that's how Theseus the hero dies. Um, he kind of gets forgotten as a hero of Athens until his ghost returns in some other famous, famous battle, which we'll talk about later. Um, so that's the story of Theseus and the Minotaur.